so hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another session of pib 247 in today's class we will be talking about the pib news from 13th to 14th of march 2023 and i hope the preparations for the upcoming examinations are going well please don't wait for the notification and yeah before we begin uh, with the session before we move ahead with the session i have something very big to announce for you guys we are coming up with something new, something exciting, which will take preparation to a level up definitely. And what is that something new will definitely change, will definitely impact your preparation, right? So, what is it now? You have to wait for a little bit. In the meantime, you guys can have some guesses that what that is something new which we are going to launch, right? So, let's talk about the very first question which says, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has approved to establish Center of Excellence for Kamlam Fruit. And Kamlam Fruit, guys, is nothing but dragon fruit, right? The government is calling it as Kamlam Fruit under Mission for Integrated Development of Horticulture in Bangalore in Karnataka. To increase domestic production and reduce imports of dragon fruit, MIDH has set target for expansion of its cultivation area to how many hectares? in the upcoming five years. So the target has been asked in the question. So let's talk about it and then we will come back to the question. Remember, the Kamlan fruit, the dragon fruit is in news because a center of excellence of dragon fruit has been approved by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and it will be set up in Bangalore, right? It will be set up there. It will be set up in Bangalore. Now the objective of this center of excellence, why this center of excellence will be established? So it will be established to achieve self-sustenance in dragon fruit, production, value addition, and enhancing economic development of the farming community. So basically to enhance the production, to enhance the exports, to enhance the income of the farmers who are producing this dragon fruit, this center of excellence has been launched. All right. And it will be established, remember, by Indian Institute of Horticultural Research, which is located in Bangalore, and it will be established in Bangalore only. Right. It will work for development of latest production technology, how we can make use of latest production technology to enhance the production of uh, the dragon fruit and also how we can increase its exports and thereby how we can increase the <coughs> farmer's income. All right. <coughs> now talking about dragon fruit. So remember guys, the dragon fruit is produced in some of the states of the country, not all states. These are like Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, for example. And currently, the total area under dragon fruit cultivation in, Indi in India is around 3,000 hectares. 3,000 hectares ka abhi hai and the target under MIDH is to increase this cultivation area from 3,000 hectares to 50,000 hectares. Right? How many hectares? 50,000 hectares in the upcoming 5 years. Right? Agle 5 saalon mein ye jo area under cultivation hai, isko 50,000 hectares kar diya jayega. Right? Its domestic production is not able to meet its demand and that is why uh, India imports this dragon fruit from various countries like Sri Lanka, Thailand, Malaysia and Vietnam. Right? So that is all about this news and so what is the target? The target is to expand its cultivation area to 50,000 hectares in the upcoming 5 years and that is why the correct answer is what option C. Moving ahead to question number 2. Atal Incubation Center, Bhava Atomic Research Center. So this means AIC established at BARC, right? What is the meaning of AIC, BARC? It is the Atal Innovation Center, Atal Incubation Center established at Bhava Atomic Research Center, right? So AIC, BARC has organized a startup entrepreneur workshop on dry and wet waste management technologies for incubation. During the workshop, two technologies, one for dry waste management, and one for wet waste management were launched, were introduced. Name the technology introduced for wet waste management. So, two technology launched kari hai, BARC ne during this workshop. One is for wet waste management and another is for dry waste management. Right? So, you have to name that technology which has been launched for wet waste management. Alright? So, let's talk about it. So, it was startup entrepreneur workshop. Right? And the topic was dry and wet waste management technologies for incubation and it was organized by AIC BARC and two technologies which have been introduced by BARC one is Shisha right Shisha Shesha whatever you want to call it Shesha is for wet waste management 
right and shesha is the saab by the way it is a snake it is a type of snake and its name shesha is given because of its helical shape because of its serpentine like shape right that's why the name is given so it is a compact helical shape based converter which is aimed at managing the biodegradable waste generated in small housing societies restaurants and small houses basically etc it will allow decentralized processing of the biodegradable waste and as i told you its name has been given on the name of a snake right on the basis of its serpentine shape as well as the sanskrit name of waste right sanskrit name of waste is somewhat similar to shesha so that's why the name shesha has been given right and for dry waste management another technology which has which has been launched is rapid bio composting technology now with this technology this technology basically is based on fungi which is named as named as trichoderma coniopsis now you don't have to remember the name of this fungi not at all right and this fungi is isolated from the tree bark all right and this technology will be environmental friendly and that is why this has been introduced it will not have any negative impact on the environment the formulation is capable of composting kitchen waste agricultural waste garden waste etc and also this method it will be completely aerobic in nature right it will be completely aerobic in nature it is devoid devoid of any kind of foul odor and hence has greater acceptability in the society jab koode ka uh, management kiya jayega when the waste will be managed there will be no foul odor and that is why it is it will have the greater acceptability in the society all right so that is all about this and <clears throat> which technology has been launched for wet wet waste management so that shesha and option d is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 3 ministry of tribal affairs is implementing central sector scheme of eklavya model residential schools to provide quality education to st students from which class to which class in remote areas to enable them to access the best opportunities in education so basically this question is based on emrs which we have discussed a lot many times but since it is in news so you never know this time a question for emrs will be there in your examination right so why it is in news by the way because a, a parliamentary reply has been submitted by the ministry of tribal affairs regarding this scheme and that is why we are discussing it right us reply mein there was nothing new right but kyunki ek reply reply aaya hai about this scheme so we have to discuss it right so talking about this scheme remember it club the model residential school the objective is to increase the literacy level the literacy rate among the tribal students jo tribal log hai unke beech mein literacy level ko increase karna is the objective and this is being done by establishing world class schools which are known as eklavya model residential schools right that is the objective it was launched way back in the year in the financial year 98 1997 1998 financial year was launched kiya gaya tha national education for society national education society for tribal student is the nodal implementing agency for this particular scheme right coverage target ye tha that by 2022 every block with more than 50% st population and at least 20000 tribal persons will have an emrs to iske regarding abhi data nahi aaya hai that whether this has been achieved or not right <coughs> talking about <coughs> construction and upgradation cost now if there is already a school right if there is an there is already a school which is meant for tribal people then for its upgradation this scheme will give rupees 5 crore per emrs right for construction of new school rupees 38 crore per emrs while if that emrs is located in north eastern states or hilly states or difficult areas then rupees 48 crore rupees will be provided for construction of a school right talking more about it so this is the basic structure admissions are given through a competitive process yun hi nahi de diya jata number of seats for boys and girls are equal equal number of seats for boys and girls no discrimination here total sanction strength of the school is 480 480 bachche total honge and education of course will be entirely free and of course the schools will be from 6th class to are from actually 6th class to 12th class theek hai so i hope guys this scheme is clear and now let's come back to the question so it is asking the question is asking about the classes so therefore the correct answer will be option d class 6 to class 
मूविंग अहेड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर मिशन पूर्वोदया इज ऑफन सीन इन न्यूज इज रिलेटेड टू विच ऑफ दर ऑफ द इकोनॉमी मिशन पूर्वोदया कौन से सेक्टर से रिलेटेड है ये आपको बता रहा है रिमेंबर मिशन पूर्वोदया वॉज लॉन्च इन दर टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टील बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टील विद एन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एक्सेलरेटेड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ईस्टर्न इंडिया राइट इट इज मेजरली फोकस्ड ऑन ईस्टर्न इंडिया थ्रू एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ एन इंटीग्रेटेड स्टील हब इन कोलकाता राइट कहां पे कोलकाता में इंटीग्रेटेड स्टील हब विल बी एस्टैब्लिश अंडर द स्कीम लॉन्च इन 2020 इट्स फोकस इज ऑन ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स लाइक ओडिशा झारखंड छत्तीसगढ़ वेस्ट बंगाल एंड सम पार्ट्स ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश एज वेल राइट एंड दिस मच इंफॉर्मेशन इज इनफ अबाउट दिस स्कीम नॉट एट ऑल रिक्वायर्ड टू गो इनटू द डिटेल्स ठीक है सो व्हाट विल बी द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन दिस स्कीम इज वेंट फॉर स्टील सेक्टर एंड दैट इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑप्शन E, steel sector. Let's talk about question number five. Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers is implementing the scheme of strengthening of pharmaceutical industry with a financial outlay of dash and for tenure from dash. So, what is the financial outlay and what is the tenure? That is the question. So, this scheme also we have discussed many times, but since it is in news, let's discuss it again. Remember, it is the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizer. which is implementing the scheme for strengthening of pharmaceutical sector with an objective to strengthen the pharmaceutical sector of course and how it will be strengthened it will be strengthened by increasing the production it will be strengthened by increasing the exports it will be strengthened by providing the pharmaceutical sector the state of the art technologies all right launch year 2022 mein launch hua tha for the period of financial year 21 22 to financial year 25 26 सपोर्ट की अगर हम बात करें तो वेरियस फाइनेंशियल इंसेंटिव्स एंड सब्सिडीज आर बीइंग प्रोवाइडेड अंडर द स्कीम विद अ टोटल आउटले ऑफ 500 करोड़ टोटल आउटले कितना है 500 करोड़ रुपए एंड देयर आर थ्री कंपोनेंट्स थ्री कंपोनेंट्स अंडर द स्कीम नंबर वन असिस्टेंस टू फार्मा इंडस्ट्री फॉर कॉमन फैसिलिटीज नाउ वट इज हैपनिंग वट इज यू नो वट गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग अंडर दिस कॉम्पोनेंट इज गवर्नमेंट बेसिकली इज प्रोवाइडिंग इज स्ट्रेंथनिंग the existing pharmaceutical sector for their sustained growth by creating common facilities and for this component the government has provided rupees 178 crores 178 crore rupees allot hua hai is component ke liye second component ki baat kare so that is pharmaceutical and medical devices promotion and development scheme right it is for facilitating growth and development of pharmaceutical and medical devices sector through various kind of surveys through various kind of study and the outlay for this component is 21.5 crores right and the third component the third component is for pharmaceutical technology upgradation assistance scheme right under this uh, the government is providing support to the small industries to the micro industries to the medium industry right so financial assistance to msmes either through up to maximum of 5% per annum of interest subvention और थ्रू क्रेडिट लिंक कैपिटल सब्सिडी ऑफ टेन परसेंट दोनों में से एक चीज राइट आइडर पांच परसेंट पर एन एम का इंटरेस्ट सबमेंशन या फिर क्रेडिट लिंक कैपिटल सब्सिडी टेन परसेंट राइट बट इफ इट इज अ केस ऑफ एमएसएमई ओन्ड और मैनेज बाय एस और एस टी देन इंटरेस्ट सबमेंशन विल बी कितना सिक्स परसेंट एंड द टोटल आउटले फॉर दिस कॉम्पोनेट इज थ्री हंड्रेड करोर जो बाकी बचे हुए पचास हजार है उसके बारे में कोई इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं दी इन्होंने थ्री हंड्रेड 21.5, 178, 50,000 बचते, 50,000 बचेंगे कि 5 लाख बचेंगे? I think 5 लाख बचेंगे, yes, 5 लाख रुपए बचेंगे, उसका I don't know ये क्या करने वाले, तो वो I think promotion वगैरह में use होगा अगले generation में, right? So coming back to the question, what is the outlay? 500 crores, and what is the tenure? 2021-22 to 2025-26. So the correct answer will be option A only, right? Option A. Let's move ahead to the questions in short now, guys. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. This Telegram channel, the link is provided in the description. And don't forget, we are coming with up very soon with something new, with something exciting, which will definitely impact your preparation, right? Some of the guesses I would like कि आप लोग दे कि वो क्या आप लोगों की क्या demand है उसके हिसाब से भी हम काम करते रहेंगे आगे. But that something new will definitely mark my words. काफी अच्छा है वो चीज और आपके लिए काफी हेल्पफुल होने वाला है राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स 
वेर हेल्थ दी ट्वेंटी एट एडिशन ऑफ सी आई आई पार्टनरशिप समिट बीन ऑर्गेनाइज बाई सी आई आई ऑफ कोर्स इन पार्टनरशिप विद मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री अंडर द थीम पार्टनरशिप फॉर रिस्पॉन्सिबल एक्सेलरेटेड इनोवेटिव सस्टेनेबल एंड इक्वटेबल बिजनेसिस सो द थीम इज गिवेन पार्टनर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज गिवेन In fact, the main organization is also given CII. The location has been asked, and therefore the correct answer is New Delhi. Option A. Question number seven. Where will be the Ministry of Tourism hosting SPO Tourism Ministers Meeting as part of India's Presidency of SCO, which will be continued till September two thousand and twenty-three. September two thousand and twenty-three. September two thousand and twenty-three. Till 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 September two thousand and twenty-three. so it will be organized in varanasi which is the first if you guys remember this varanasi is the first cultural capital of C sco as well so option d is the correct answer question number 8 with which country has india recently signed an moc to strengthen cooperation and research networking between research institutions to promote mobility funding opportunity now this has been signed by serb science and engineering research board with sweden and that is why the correct answer is option c question number 9 as per rbi to help women to overcome the hurdles in accessing bank credit and credit plus services central government has drawn up a 14 point action plan now it is 13 for implementation uh by psbs the psbs were advised to give mark how much percent of their anbc for lending to women anbc ka kitna percent women ko loan mein dena hai so that is 5% option e is the correct answer very very important question question number 10 when was the e verification scheme launched by itd income tax department with an aim to share and verify financial transactions information of tax payer using it so e verification scheme was launched by income tax department in the year 2021 and that is why the correct answer is what option e question number 11 pe chalte the update to ndc nationally determined contribution under paris agreement 2015 submitted to unf triple c united nation framework convention on climate change in august 2022 includes India's commitment to reduce emissions intensity of GDP by how much percent by the year 2030 from 2005 level? This you have written a lot of times, right? बहुत बार आपने बहुत जगह पढ़ा होगा. So India has committed reduction of emission intensity of its GDP by 45 percent by 2030, and that's why the correct answer is option C. Guys, the last question for today: Which of the following organizations is are rendering district or block level agro meteorology advisory services for the benefits of farmers in the country under the scheme Gramin Krishi Mosam Seva, which was launched by Ministry of Earth Sciences in the year 2015? Under the scheme, the ministry provides the ministry through IMD, the Nodal Implementing Agency is IMD, along with IA. Uh, IC Indian Council of Agriculture Research ICAR right and uh, under the scheme basically what happens is two times a week twice a week weather based advisories or you can say crop based advisories are provided to the farmers via sms via you know print media via audio media via visual media any kind of media hafte mein do baar unko weather based advisory di jati hai and the two Agencies which do it are IMD and not ISRO ICAR. So A and C is the correct answer. Option E, right? Option E is the correct answer. All right. So that is all for today. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And yeah, I'll see you in the next session on on when on Monday. All right. So goodbye. Take care and God bless.